Welcome to Making Leadership Work on ThinkTech. I'm your host today, Carol Mon Lee. Our show is called Recognition for Justices, and we're going to talk to Justice Sabrina McKenna, who just received an international award. She's been a role model to many over the years. It is also credit to Hawaii when our own justices and judges receive awards of this caliber. If you want to ask a question or participate in this discussion, you can tweet us at ThinkTechHI or call us at 808-374-2014. Our guest for the show is Associate Justice Sabrina McKenna of the Hawaii Supreme Court. She has been on the court since 2011 and before that served in the state's family court, district court, and circuit courts. She has also been a litigator, corporate counsel, and law professor at UH's Richardson School of Law, where she also graduated. Justice McKenna was a recent recipient of the Association of Corporation Counsel Foundation Global Women in Law and Leadership Award. We will discuss Justice McKenna's major contributions in the legal profession that led to this award and what it means in the legal and judicial communities. Welcome to this to this show, Justice McKenna. Sabrina. Thank you so much for having me. We're so Thank glad to you. have you. Well, you've been such a role model, as we mentioned, for so many. But this particular award uh, is, is, is very impressive because of its international scope. So first, I'd like you to maybe first, let's show a picture of you're one of five justices on the Hawaii Supreme Court. Yes. Yes. And this is his current court. Can you identify for us the justices? Sure. The, uh, seated in the middle is our Chief Justice, Mark Rechtenwald. Uh, seated to the left of him is uh, the most senior Associate Justice, Paula Nakayama. Uh, to the, standing to the left is uh, Justice Richard Pollack. And standing to the right is Justice uh, Michael Wilson. Right. And Sabrina, I know you were the third woman Justice ever appointed to our, our Hawaii Supreme Court. In how many years is that? Has the Supreme Court been in existence in Hawaii? Well, if you start with a kingdom, it would be 1841. So, uh, but if you start with a state, it's 1959. Right. The first woman was, of course, Justice Rhoda, Rhoda Lewis, Lewis with statehood in 1959. Right. Well, yes. it's very impressive. It were, uh, you've contributed so much, both in terms of um, your legal. Uh, contributions, but also the broader community contributions, which is some of the work that's being recognized today by this award. So tell us about the award, how it came about, and uh, some of the background about how you identified. Sure. Identify. Well, the uh, Association of Corporate Counsel is a global organization consisting of about 40,000 corporate counsel throughout the world. and. Uh, this is the second year that they've given this award for women, uh, global law and leadership. Um, and uh, I'm not quite sure how they heard of me. I think it was through, because some of the speaking that I've done internationally, apparently somehow I came to their attention. And uh, uh, they said that they would like to um, include me as an awardee this year. And I was very honored um, to, um, to be considered oh, that's um, great. because it does recognize the good work that we do, all of us are doing here in Hawaii. Right. So corporate counsel means th those who are attorneys working for businesses, corporations, is that correct? Right, in-house right? counsel. In-house counsel. In-house right. counsel. And you right. were, actually were an in-house counsel. Yes, I was uh, from uh, 87 to 1990. I was in-house counsel to a Japan-based Japan, Japan -based corporation, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yes. Great. And so where was the award given to you? It was at the United Nations. Uh, they did it at uh, the United Nations, um, and uh, there were uh, members, uh, officials from the United Nations in pre at, uh, that were present. Uh, over 250 people flew in, uh, mainly from the United States, but throughout the world, and it was truly an honor to uh, be able to um, receive that award. Right. I think we have a picture of the award with Sabrina receiving it with the two other recipients. Can you right. tell us who these? Actually, to the left is Jennifer Chen. She's the director of the ACC Foundation. And uh -huh. uh, in the middle is Kim Rivera. She is uh, the general counsel to HP. Hawaii, uh, Hewlett Packard, Packard Inc., uh, a global organization, a very impressive woman. There were so many impressive women there, and I was just really humbled and honored. To be included. And there you are. And are you standing at the United Nations? It looks like you're yes, on, on the Yes. There this is a like Hudson a River. Lanai, right, exactly. And uh, the, there's a uh, dining uh, facility inside where the uh, interviews and um, took place, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I know that uh, what was said for 
in, in your recognition was not only were, was the award given for your individual successes, which we've, we've talked a little bit about, but about your work in breaking barriers for other women in diverse groups. So I know that you talked about that in your, 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 your talk, your speech. Can you tell us a little bit about what you covered? Sure. Well, I talked about uh, my work um, in terms of the international arena, uh, but also locally and trying to uh, encourage and assist women uh, in, to achieve uh, positions of leadership. Um, and I've... Can you give me some examples? Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, just locally, I, I do try to encourage uh, qualified women to uh, apply for judgeships um, or to apply for higher office within the judiciary. Um, um, I think just like I was mentored. Uh, who, who was your mentor? Uh, How? You know, the Over main the mentor I had clearly was uh, Judge uh, Bambi Hefel, who encouraged me to apply, who helped me through the application process. Uh, when she was appointed to circuit court, I was actually, uh, that's the first judgeship I got was her position at district court. I yeah, see. So she, she moved up to circuit court. She moved court. up to circuit and she her helped vacancy. me. Her right. She Created mentored me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and, but you know, um, throughout the process, you know, there were so many women uh, judges that helped me uh, throughout the years. And there's too many to mention, but I will mention Judge Marie Milks and uh, Judge who was the first first woman mm. at the district court, and then um, then she so. got elevated to circuit court. Um, Do you recall what year that was? You know, I don't know when she got to circuit. Was it like 1980? It was in the 80s. 80s. Mm -hmm. It was in the 80s. 88, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, but um, I think Judge Betty Vitusik was the head of family court. But for Many years when I started practicing law, it was just Judge Vitusik and Judge uh, Marie Milks that were the only judges when I actually started practicing law. That's amazing. Right. And, and what year was that? And I started in 1982. Okay. And you graduated from law school from the UH yes. in 82? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. I know you mentioned in your um, talk something about speaking out when necessary. What, what, what were you referring to particularly? Well, you know, I think it's really important for women to... Um, sometimes we, and especially uh, Asian women, tend not to be as assertive. Um, and I think, I think when you see an injustice or when you see something that needs to be said, it's important to speak out. You have to pick and choose your battles, of course. Uh, but when you see something that should be done or is, or it, it, I do try to speak out in terms of encouraging uh, not just women to apply, but calling people on the fact that, hey, we don't have enough women in leadership, um, and we're doing much better. We're doing much better. Uh, but, uh, you know, especially even in the but private practice, we still don't have enough women uh, staying on to make partner uh, right. at law firms. Um, and um, anyway, I, I've tried to make it a point to speak out when I think it's appropriate to do right. so. So not just in terms of career choices, but in terms of life issues, in terms of um, uh, whatever social it is. issues. Exactly, whatever right. it is, you know, in terms of making the workplaces more conducive for women uh, to feel welcomed. Right. But also, you know, I actually, it's a, one of the things that I think uh, has really struck me recently, and it was covered in the Atlantic, but it's the confidence gap. I think uh, one of the reasons and there are various reasons, but one of the factors that is that we women ourselves uh, don't have the confidence to apply. All the studies show that women will not apply for a position unless they're 100% qualified, whereas men will apply even if they only meet 50% of the minimum <laughs> qualifications. And so that that's one of the things, you know, I, I, I'm always telling women, apply right. for this judgeship, and they're, they're like, Oh, I don't think I'm qualified. I say you're eminently qualified. You are very qualified. Please let me, you know, help you. I'll be a reference if, if I can help you. You know. Right. That so that thing. just shows how important it is for, in this case, other women to support women, who may have some hesitation, but to know that they have the backing of other women who have succeeded and exactly. have supported them. Um, tell me, were you born with this confidence? or this ability to speak up, or was it something you developed over? It was definitely something that I acquired over the years. Now, yeah. I did have a mother who was a very strong woman, 
And as I was growing up, she told me, you know, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. And so I, that was really helpful. But still, growing up in this world. And in um, Hawaii. And in Hawaii. Well, I grew up in Japan, you know. Yeah, yes, I grew up in right. Japan and a little, a little bit in the Philippines also. Um, and, um, but, yeah, you, you're still a product of this world. And, of course, you know, me, I have this added layer of being a member of the LGBT community, mm -hmm. and I had to deal with that for so many years. And you're also, ethnically, you're half Japanese, half... Right. Half oh, Caucasian, Caucasian. Right, right, right. So I'm sure that was, uh, in Japan, unusual. Right. It was, it was unusual, so I was kind of like a foreigner in Japan, and in the American context, I'm a, I'm a foreigner, yeah, I'm yeah. different, right? right so, right. Mm -hmm. But in that sense, it's good because, you know, you're... You, uh, there's pros and cons to mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. right? So how do you define yourself? Because we have talked in the past about feminism. Yes. And feminist. Yes, yes. I am a feminist. Yeah. A feminist, I believe, is a person who believes in equal, equal rights and equal justice for all. Exactly. And not just for women. It's for right. men. You know, when I talk about Title IX and the importance of what Patsy Takemoto Mink did and the importance of Title IX, I also talk about the fact that it helped men, too. Men couldn't get into nursing school. You know, there was a district court bailiff who told me that when he came back from um, Vietnam, he couldn't get into court reporting school. He wanted to be a court reporter, but he was discriminated against because he was, was a, man. a man. And you know, so, right. That's wonderful. We didn't get a little into some of your background because among your many accomplishments, you were uh, one of the early beneficiaries of Title IX in yes. Hawaii, right? Because yes. you received a basketball scholarship to play basketball. I did. I did. I, did. I walked onto the team, and, you know, from 74 to 78, um, I was, At they UH. didn't recruit anybody, so I was able to walk on. You know, back then there was no high school girls basketball in mm -hmm. Hawaii, um, and so I played for the U.S. military schools um, overseas, and so I was able to, um, I played, and so therefore, made the team and got a scholarship. Great. So let's, um, we only have a, a, a few more seconds before we go sure. to break. Can we call, show a couple more pictures, Ray? This is with the mayor of Okinawa. Last November I spoke at a uh, televised uh, symposium, first symposium on, in Okinawa on LGBT rights. But while there I also spoke a lot about women's rights. Right. Yes. And we can tell the audience how much work you do in the international arena, right? That's part of your uh, both your your legal obligation not obligations but your professional interests yes mm -hmm. yes clearly and yes. outreach as a justice in Hawaii extending yourself so let's let's show one more picture right and then we'll go to break this is uh, with Justice Wilson and Dean Raj Kumar of the Jindal Global Law School law school where I'm honored in Delhi and uh, last couple years I've been honored to visit that law school to speak a lot on women's rights LGBT rights uh -huh. Uh huh. And I know we've also done a lot with uh, India on environmental issues. Right, and, and environmental, environmental issues. And I speak at an environmental conference also. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, on that note, we're going to take a short break. I'm with my special guest, Justice Sabrina McKenna. And we're talking about making leadership work in Hawaii and about her recent award from the ACC Foundation. So we'll be right back. Thank you. She said, What are you doing? Research says reading from birth accelerates our baby's brain development. Push! Ah! Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. We've got to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Try a little more, more than every more, let's do what we can. Welcome back. This is Carol Mon Lee with my special guest. Associate Justice Sabrina McKenna, and we were talking about uh, not only her a recent international award from the ACC Foundation, but also about her uh, many uh, 
work, much work that she does in the international community. We've already seen some pictures, images of her in India, in Japan, uh, and so I think we have a few more images here that we can show. Okay, now this is a picture of you in? In our courtroom, uh, in the downstairs uh, historical courtroom, speaking to a group of uh, Japanese students. I do a lot of international uh, speaking to international audiences, especially from Japan, because Japanese is my first language. And I think this all, the award really started uh, when I became a judge. There would be so many Japanese attorneys that would come to my courtroom. And then when Japan went through this uh, judicial reform, they really wanted lay participation. So they uh, came to study uh, different courts, but they ended up focusing on Hawaii. Right. Um, and so I was honored to be invited to Japan many times in national TV to speak about um, the jury system as well as judicial selection, lay participation, and of course, um, every chance I got, I also spoke about the fact that why am I the only woman on this panel? <laughs> oh, and that's, was that the case? You were the only uh, woman? There were, there, I remember the first national symposium, I was the only woman. I said, where are the Japanese women? Uh-huh, and, and um, well, I... Are there more now? Yes, I think there are more uh -huh. now. There, are, I think, but still, I think less than 20% of Japanese uh, judges are women. And how yeah. about women in law schools? Do they, um, are they fairly highly represented? I think they have a, a pretty good representation, uh, but um, definitely not at our level. You know, our level, United 50%. States is over 50%. But that's also Title IX, right? Correct. That made all the difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's over 50%. And but only 27% of judges in the United States are women. Uh, we're a little bit higher. We're at 37%. In Hawaii. In Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, so, and why um, do you think that is? Um, I think that there's, um, okay, the reality is that all the statistics show that merit selection uh, processes are better for diversity. Okay. And so many states have elected judges. Those states, it's not as good for women and minorities. So we have the most diverse state judiciary in the United States. That's good. Yes, we do. Right, we do. and so we select our judges by the Judicial Selection, Selection Commission, Commission, right? whose members are appointed by, by the governor, the president of the Senate, the Speaker of the House, the Chief Justice, and two members voted in by the bar, and only four are attorneys. Really? Okay, yeah. so that's proven to be, because I know when the Judicial Selection Commission was started, which was, I believe, 1978? Yes. Constitutional uh, Convention? Right. And it actually came into effect, I believe, in 1980, right. implemented in 1980. Right. But it so has over, made a big difference. Right. So over the 37 years, you've seen a change in the judiciary. Oh, and you're exactly. a beneficiary of I that, too. I am a direct beneficiary mm -hmm. of the uh, Title IX as well as the Constitutional Amendment. Okay. Definitely. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, two more slides, a few more slides. And this is a beautiful picture of you centered with beautiful lay on. And uh, this was when I received the uh, Uni University of Hawaii uh, Distinguished Alumnus Award back in 2009 right. when I was still at the circuit court. I was uh -huh. truly honored. And that was for your many accomplishments. Not Up to that point, you up weren't even on the Supreme Court. Yeah. Yes. And you were, of course, a graduate of the William S. Richardson School of Law, which probably counts I'm among I'm a proud uh, <laughs> graduate of Richardson, yes. yes. I am a Richardson lawyer, as we say. Right, uh -huh. okay, and uh, another image? And this uh, this was after a, a speech, a keynote speech that I gave at Law Asia in Hong Kong last year. Uh, it was a family law forum uh, because I used to head family uh, court. They asked me to give the keynote um, in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And so how big a, a group was that? Hundreds of uh -huh. uh, uh, attorneys from throughout Asia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, let's talk about, we just uh, focused a little bit on Hawaii and uh, Hawaii's progress in bringing more women judges, at least, to uh, bringing it to our community, which yes. is so important. Are, are we doing enough, though? What else could we be doing? What else could our community be doing? And what else could we as a country be doing? Yes, well, um, as a community, uh, although we've made tremendous progress. Recently, I've, you've probably, no, I don't know if you've noticed, but there really haven't been as many women ap applicants, especially to the circuit court. And so, uh, you know, Hawaii Women Lawyers has um, headed a few panels. I've been, you know, I've spoken on panels when I've been asked, and uh, they had even had a meeting with the governor, which I actually attended a couple mi months ago. The governor does want more women to apply. He would love to appoint more women to the circuit court, but we need more uh, qualified women to apply. Now, I know in the early days, yes. when I first uh, was a member of the bar, uh, part of the problem was women 
didn't quite satisfy the qualifications because they hadn't been in practice, the minimum, whether it was five years or 10 years. Yes. Uh, but that's not the problem anymore. That's not the issue anymore. So I, like I said, I think this goes back to the confidence gap. Thing. The confidence gap. gap. Right, people, the women are not applying. Uh, even though the, uh, they're well qualified, they think that they have to have the most stellar um, qualifications possible, you know, um, uh, to even consider applying. And so I think it's incumbent on, um, and I'm no longer at the trial court, but I think that people that are in the litigation system, it would be really good for, for people there, attorneys and or judges or court staff, to encourage uh, promising women to apply for judgeships. So, so organizations like Hawaii Women Lawyers. Yes. Um, what other organizations would be helpful? In, um, in a, any any of the organizations, mm -hmm. maybe the trial, uh, the criminal right. defense bar organization, the bar association, the bar association. Yes. Of course, and there's yes. a federal bar association. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. But I think you know we're. I think there's been a lot of reach out to different people and. How many openings we'll are we talking about? Well, we have. Uh, I think. Uh, I think there's like five circuit court openings right now. Um, uh, first circuit and third circuit. I think we have a family court opening, a district court opening, so it just keeps happening. Mm -hmm. And so th for the Supreme Court, there are a total of five justices. How about the appellate court? There are six ju uh, judges on the uh, Intermediate Court of Appeals, mm -hmm. and we're, we're doing pretty well on the appellate courts. Mm -hmm. It's you know two out of five at the Supreme Court, three out of six on the ICA. Uh, but it's really now the trial courts that we need to get more mm -hmm. women applying. Mm -hmm. I know there was a recent article that appeared last uh, week about how women make uh, up a very sh small percentage of equity partners in law firms. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And even in Hawaii, you know, um, although 45% of associates are women, only 26% of partners in Hawaii are women, according to the latest HSBA statistics. Right, and of mm -hmm. those partners, and maybe we should explain to our audience right. uh, the difference between associate and partner and the difference between an equity partner and right. a, uh, a partner. Right, exactly. Equity partner are partners that actually get to share in the profits, and not right. all the partners are equity partners. Right, mm -hmm. so that's a big distinction. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the argument that's been put forth that uh, women often want to have a more balanced um, life that might include time for whether it's bearing children, raising children, staying at home, working part time, working out of the home, which might not be as conducive to the amount of work uh, or energy that's required to become, in this case, an equity partner or a justice of, of a court. Well, I think that, you know, there may be some truth to that, but I think that that should transcend. Uh, gender. Uh, the husbands should be equally involved. It should be just as hard for the men as it is for the women that are parents. And so it needs to be a shared burden. Mm -hmm. And how have you balanced it? Because I know you're the mother of three, three wonderful three, children. Three, right. And so how many dogs? I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> two dogs in the family, but I do, uh, there, I, you know, the children have another mother, which uh -huh. uh, is, I, I did get a big laugh uh, when at the ACC uh, interview uh, when they asked, how do you balance it, how do you do this? I said, well, it's really helpful to have another woman <laughs> helping you raise your children. <laughs> and, and what about outside activities? Are you still involved in sports? And, um... and not, uh, not organized sports at this point. I do try to exercise regularly, um, you know, uh, on my own, but uh, I'm not involved in organized sports at this point, yes. Are you still involved in the Etty Bowl? No, I, just as a cheerleader, <laughs> just as I just go to cheer. Uh -huh. We should explain to our audience that the Etty Bowl is the annual um, the so, Richardson uh, Flag football. Uh, flag football homecoming game. It's the alumni, the women uh, graduates against the law students, and uh -huh. it's been going on for many, many years. It's a wonderful tradition it's that a brings great together, tradition. basically, as they say, town and gown, the law school at yes. the university versus the graduates who are now judges and uh, government lawyers. You know, it's it's a way, right, and it's a way for the women to engage in the kind of sports networking that the men have always engaged right. in. Whether you know, I have golf. hired people mm -hmm. that have I've that have come to extern me mm -hmm. with me through a table that I met through the a table um, activities and I've had, you know, law clerks that have been a table participants. 
<laughs> it's a wonderful tradition. Yes. And everybody who has been to the law school, who has been associated with um, women lawyers, uh, look forward to it every year. Yes, so, it's a great, yeah. great event. Well, we're almost at the end of this interview, okay. Justice McKenna. So I'd like to you to look into camera four and, and uh, if you have a few words of suggestions or, or recommendations or thoughts on how we can see more women in leadership, particularly in the judiciary. And uh, of course, your, your particular award and how that has encouraged you and maybe uh, help other, other women see where the opportunities are. Mm -hmm. I'm going to paraphrase a definition of leadership uh, from uh, Susan Caputo, who spoke here uh, a couple years ago at the Hawaii uh, Wahine Forum. But basically, she talks about leadership as being uh, a leader is someone who uses what they have themselves. She calls it the greatness in oneself to bring, uh, to achieve extraordinary outcomes by engaging in the greatness of others. In, order, in other words, a leader is someone, it doesn't have to be a title, it's someone that brings out the greatness and brings out the best in others to achieve goals. So, um, you know, I just want to encourage the woman out there to, uh, to go for it. You know, I, when I was young, I never envisioned being in this type of position. And it's, um, it's not just something that hope happened overnight, uh, but it's been a step-by-step -step process. I still have my self-doubts as I go through life. Life is a process of introspection and learning. And, you know, so don't have the confidence in yourself to go ahead and do the best that you can bring out the leadership, bring out the greatness in others to achieve extraordinary goals. Right. So both for yourself, apply for positions, go out there, stretch yourself, right. go for it. And, and for women who may feel that they are in a different place, encourage those Encourage women. those people so yes. that we can achieve justice for all. Right. Well, yes. on that note, thank you so much. Thank you so much Adrienne. for having me. It's an honor. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. And that brings us to the end of our show. We've enjoyed bringing to you Making Leadership Work in Hawaii with my guest, Associate Justice Sabrina McKenna of the Hawaii Supreme Court. We've been talking about recognition for justices and its, a cre and its credit to Hawaii when our judges receive awards of such high caliber. Thanks to our production engineer, Ray Sangalong, and our floor manager, Rob McLean, and all the people who care and contribute to our Think Tech production. If you want to see our show, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii, where there will be a link to more shows just like this one. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Aloha.